not seeing Trey Jefferson play basketball, you are in for a treat. A little bit of drama early in the year, averages 24 points per game, and Martavius McKnight, Arkansas Pine Bluff, the SWAC player of the year and newcomer of the year. A great matchup of point guards. Texas Southern, not too far away from their campus across town. And they've been seven times to the NCAA tournament. Last year, three of the last four. They are wearing the maroon uniforms and Arkansas Pine Bluff in the whites. And it's the Lions. It'll have the game's first possession. And we see Martavius McKnight bring it up. Uh, these teams played twice earlier in the year. Arkansas Pine Bluff won both matchups by a combined three points. <laughs> one by two at Texas Southern, one by one at home in Pine Bluff. It's an offensive rebound for Trent Steen. Jackson puts it up, good. And Charles Jackson begins the game with a bucket for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Yeah, just a 28% three-point shooter. That is a great start for Charles Jackson. And we see that zone out of Arkansas Pine Bluff. If it's in the half court, we're going to see zone from Arkansas Pine Bluff. I cannot wait to watch this because Texas Southern is the best three-point field goal shooting team in the SWAC. And ordinarily, you don't play a 2-3 zone against a team that's got a lot of shooters. Dante Clark nicely feeding Marquise Salmon for the lay-in. All right, so two keys to this game, rebounding. The first time these two teams played TSU dominated the glass, and then that three-point shooting we talked about. The first time these two teams played TSU, just three for 16 against that 2-3 zone. And Trey Jefferson just 5-7, pulled down that rebound, drives the other way, leaves it for Clark. There's a three, good. And right out of the shoot, we see that impressive three-point shooting by the Tigers. Now, people that have watched TSU all year, they key this team on whether Jefferson comes out passing early, and so, I think for Mike Davis, he's going to be pleased with the way they've handled the ball the first two possessions. Steen trying to fight for position, left it short. Harper offensive put back, not there. A third opportunity is good for Trayvon Harper. Coming off a great game last night, 23 points for Harper. That's his fourth offensive rebound in the first two minutes of this game. Three from the right corner, and Texas Southern two for two, thanks to Kanan McClellan there. And we're going to talk about it the whole game. Again, when you play in a 2-3 zone, what you struggle with is matching up on shooters and rebounding, which incidentally, what George Ivory told us, are the two keys to this game. Loose ball now, diving for it, and a little push. It's called on Arkansas Pine Bluffs Trayvon Harper. Arkansas Pine Bluff, this zone starts out like it's going to be a trap. They extend it up, and as the ball approaches, they just collapse back down. It's going to take a lot of communication on that back end of that zone. They need to be pointing and talking. To the Clark. Oh, alone. He had him over the top, but a little too far for Marquise Salmon. First turnover for Mike Davis's team. Sixth season at Texas Southern, of course, was the coach at Indiana. Just does a solid job. Three out of the last four years, he's gone to the tournament. He has won conference leagues and titles in three different leagues in the Big Ten, the Conference USA, and now in the SWAC. Harper off the mark with a three. Jefferson sends a pass into the corner. So far, Texas Southern has handled the zone very well. Really good ball movement. Clark underneath, back out. Bruce fouled. Fouled by Christian Robertson. There's George Ivory, 10 seasons. Won the SWAC in 10. They went to the NCAA tournament for the only time in school history. That was the field of 65 then, so they played Winthrop in the play-in game. They won that, and then they lost to Duke, and Duke wound up beating Butler by two to win the national championship. Well, and arguably, when you lose in the national championship, you could arguably say that you were the second best team in the country, right? <laughs> I guess in theory, uh, who, who you could say that. that. You're from Texas Southern, you could try that argument. That's around and in for Derek Bruce. And Texas Southern has hit their first 
four shots from the field. And George Ivory told us he is going to stay in that 2-3 zone, but man, what a start to this game for TSU shooting the ball. Arkansas Pine Bluff on the other side, two of seven from the field, including one for four from Harper. Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. The one seed, they didn't win the regular season. That was won by Grambling State, but they're ineligible due to academic violations. And then three teams tied with a 12 and six record. Prairie View A&M, TSU, and Arkansas Pine Bluff. And Arkansas Pine Bluff was the beneficiary of the three-way tiebreaker. And at three for Joe Randall Tolliver. Not only has Texas Southern scored on all of their four field goal attempts, but have assisted on all four. And he stepped on the sideline. McClellan did a turnover and a timeout. Now, early in the SWAC championship, it has been Texas Southern knocking down all. Your six seed, you got a pretty good conference. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty good. That is going to be a great basketball game. This is the 29th year in a row that either North Carolina or Duke are in the ACC championship game. That is an amazing display of dominance. I will say this. I thought Duke was about to come back and win that game last night at over North Carolina late. It's an important shot right there for Trent Steed. And even though Texas Southern hasn't missed a shot yet and hit three threes, they're only up one. Yeah, you know, you look up the clock, you think you'd be up by 10. And has not phased Arkansas Pine Bluff at all. And Tolliver leaves it back. McKnight back to him. I don't know if he was expecting it. Uh, not very good spacing on a two-on-one fast break. You want to spread out and run the width of the lane and maximize the distance that the defensive player's got to go. And that was not very good fundamentals. Got a pass underneath Trayvon Reed, the 7-2 center who has checked in. Texas Southern comes up empty that time. And they get it right back as Jackson turns it over. Derek Bruce commits the foul on the push. Yeah, what great defense by Charles Jackson. Trey Jefferson was running the wing, was all by himself. Derek Bruce tried to throw a one-handed bounce pass and thread the needle, and Jackson dropped that hand down. That was great transition defense. Steed faces up and shoots, but left it short. Here's the run out by Bruce. And Jefferson defended by McKnight. Here's Clark, gets down low, spins. Tolliver came over defensively with the help, but he pick up the foul. So here's a challenge. You're playing a zone defense. You're playing against a team that has made every three-point field goal attempt. You've got to spread out to the three-point line, and that makes you vulnerable at the high post, low post action. So right now, is running what's called a three-out two-in. They're trying to spread out that back line, and then if you can get an entry pass to the high post, you're playing two-on-one on what's X5. So George Ivory realizes that he's going to have to take away that high post pass in addition to matching up with the shooters. See keys to the game. Texas Southern want to handle the zone. Done a pretty good job of that so far. As a result, Arkansas Pine Bluff does not want to get into a transition game, which Texas Southern can take advantage of. McKnight from 16 took a quick shot there. Jefferson out with it. Bruce backs up. That's an open look for Jefferson from the corner, just a bit strong. Down low, and a foul committed by Trayvon Reed. And Trayvon Reed leads the Southwestern Athletic Conference in block shots. And, boy, he is so long at 7'2". If he would just leave his arm 
come straight up, challenge vertically without putting a roof over the top of the offensive player. Watch, his arms are up, and then he just comes down. And when you're 7-2, you can cause a lot of problems just by going vertical, right? Belly up and challenge shots vertically. Steen is 65% foul shooter. He is the SWAC defensive player of the year. He splits that pair, one a two. Two-point lead for Texas Southern. Now they got Trey Jefferson playing the high post against that zone. Put in by Dante Clark. Clark, a team I had 22 points last night against Prairie View a &M. And here comes Jefferson once again. Trey Jefferson, he's listed at 5'7". Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. He looks a lot like 5'5", five, five, but then he dribbles that ball so, so low to the ground that, man, you've got to really bend your knees to play defense on him. He's got kind of a spud wet thing going Yeah, he does. Well, there's that high post again, and right now TSU is getting the ball to the high post almost every time down the court. Jackson trying to turn the corner. Back, McKnight passes up the three, shoots the long two, and gets whacked by Derek Bruce. Well, I looked over at Mike Davis on that foul, and he jumped up, and Derek Bruce now, I believe, has two fouls. He's playing great defense, but exactly what we just talked about with Trayvon Reed. Don't reach out as you're trying to block shots. Mike Davis just wants to force UAPB to knock down shots over contested arms, hands up high. McKnight, not only one player of the year in the conference, but he's the newcomer of the year, transfer from Itawamba Community College. He is a native, well, actually from Memphis, Tennessee originally, but grew up in Walls, Mississippi. You see as Bruce comes out, nope, he's gonna stay in. I had a little chat there with Coach Davis, I think Coach said, hey, I I'm trusting you not to pick up a third foul here. Well, you're going to have to take him off McKnight, right? I mean, you can't leave a guy that's as valuable as Bruce out there with two fouls and still 12 minutes to go and have him trying to guard Martavius McKnight. So the missed free throws keep this a six-point game as we're eight minutes into this SWAC championship game from Houston. And Bruce says, there's a reason you want to leave me on the floor. <laughs> Uh, the first meeting between these two teams, Derek Bruce was great. Led all scores with 25 points in that game that was played here in Houston over TSU. Hey, I'm not somebody to pick on a guy's footwear because I'm still wearing Buster Browns that my mom bought me. But those shoes that Bruce is wearing, it looks like he's going to go for a hike. Dude, he's got on his Timberlands, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's amazing he's as athletic in a <laughs> pair of Timberland boots. Rebounded off the floor by Trayvon Reed. You can spot him on the floor pretty easily from yeah, the waist down, can. though. Comes Clark, kicked into the corner. That's a wide open three. Tip good. That's what the big man's there for. Uh, Trayvon Reed did a really nice job of going over the back without getting on the back. He had that long arm straight up and a very nice tip. And, and good officiating did not call that foul. Texas Southern's gone on a 7-0 run that continues as that three off the mark from Kamari Hardy. Blocking foul called on the drive from Robert Lewis. What's going on, Steen? How about the kicks, man? Those are sweet. I don't know why you made fun of him, man. I wasn't making fun. I just... Yeah, you were of tomorrow on Selection Sunday, 7 Eastern. It's Bracketology with Reese, J. Will, J. Bill, Seth, Dickie B, and a host of our college group experts. We'll have a complete breakdown of each region. Sports Center starts it off 5 Eastern on ESPN with the reveal of the NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. And it also will stream live on the ESPN app. One of these two teams will know by that point whether they are in or not. Winner to the NCAA tournament. 
last night, TSU shot 67% in the second half. And not only have they picked up where they left off, they've actually heated up a little bit. I mean, they were shooting 80% here in the first half. An amazing start to this game. And then defensively, you have Pine Bluff. They've missed their last six field goal attempts and have gone almost five minutes without a bucket. Harper can't end that drought. Bruce playing with those two fouls. Clark. Offensive rebound by Salmon. Oh, we mentioned the two close losses Texas Southern had to Pine Bluff. They're almost kind of playing like they have that in the back of their mind. You, you need a little bit of an asterisk right now because that first matchup, TSU was playing with a six-man rotation. They didn't have four of their regular players, but the bigger problem right now for Arkansas Pine Bluff, they're all there's two three zone. They are not taking away the outside shot or the inside shot. And right now, well, that defense does not look very good. And Martavius McKnight ends the scoring drought for Arkansas Pine Bluff and makes it a 10-point game. Right, if you're going to play a zone, then commit to taking something away. And right now, the TSU just throwing the ball around, getting anything they want. And the lob there to Trayvon Reed. Well, you mentioned how well Texas Southern shoots the three, so you can see they wouldn't want to give up the long ball. But then again, you got a 7-2 guy down low. It's a bucket. And Trayvon Harper. Is there an answer right now for them defensively? Uh, if I'm George Ivory, I get out of this zone just for a couple of possessions. Just give TSU a different look. out of bounds by Robertson. Tolliver is checked in. Joe Randall Tolliver, senior out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Wow, Jefferson with the shot clock winding down, hit the rim. Bounces out to McKnight. In the lane, the drive, and the bucket for McKnight. Where's that been for them today? Yeah, but see, that's Derek Bruce. Cannot afford to pick up his third foul. He got a half step on him, and he pulled his arms back and opened up his shoulders and just allowed McKnight to dribble straight to the rim. Mike Davis, I might think about switching defensive assignments to get more pressure on McKnight. Here's Clark from just beyond the free throw line. Robertson gathers. Well, Bruce still guarding McKnight. Boy, the Arkansas Pine Bluff, you've got to isolate him and go at it. One and done. Ah, Jefferson with some moves, but you know, on the back end was Salmon. To stop the drive there, but he picks up the foul. Just over seven and a half minutes to go, first half, a 26 18 lead. Chris, my partner here, he's concerned about his alma mater, Houston, right now, matched up with Greg Marshall's team. Well, that has been a two or three yeah. point game the entire way. And right now, Rob Gray, Corey Davis combined for 39 points, still seven minutes to go in that game. The swag champ there at the bottom right hand of the tickets to be punched. That'll be the next one. It'll come right here from Houston in the swag championship. Texas Southern now with the nine point lead over Arkansas Pine Bluff. What do we have? Uh, 15 tickets punched so far. Number 16 will come here. 80% free throw shooter Trey Jefferson makes it a 10 point game. Uh, seven minutes to go. Trey Jefferson who averages 24 points per game. Those were his first two points of this game. And missed his first three from the field, all three point shots. He does have four rebounds, which when you think you got a 5'7 guy out there, yeah, sure, he's going to have four, four rebounds. He's coming, coming off the game, he had 25 points and six yeah, rebounds last night in the semis. Crazy. Loose ball underneath. Great hustle. I'm telling you, Lamont Walker absolutely did not give up on that ball. Here's Bruce. 
And I repeat, there's a reason why he's been in the game with two fouls for a while. Uh, how smooth was that? I mean, the up fake and waited for the defensive player to fly by and then knocked it down. And here's that adjustment we thought Mike Davis would make. Charles, uh, right now, da Dante Clark is chasing around Martavius McKnight. And McKnight got it to go and won. Robertson, that is. That a cool thing to watch. I mean, the relationship between a coach and trusting his players. I'm telling you, 90 percent, 95 percent of the coaches in Division One basketball, if one of your starters picked up two fouls the first seven minutes of the game, I'm telling you, he's coming out. Oh, absolutely. And he's not going to come back into the second half. And Mike Davis looks over, and Derek Bruce says, "Look, I got it. I understand. I'll play smart and trust him." And all he's doing is just knocking down shots. And I left that one just a little bit short, his first missed field goal attempt of the day. And then he had to get out of the way of McKnight there. A really smart adjustment by Mike Davis. Jackson over McKnight. Harper in a crowd. Banyard comes down with the rebound, tried to come back up with it, was stripped, but fouled. A little bit of a late whistle, but. Whistle nonetheless, and a technical just assessed. Wait a minute, the official actually shoved Lamont Walker. I mean, he put his hand on his chest and shoved him. I have never seen that, and I don't know what happened. Uh, and if Lamont Walker bumped the ref, then he deserves to be ejected. But Mike Davis is going to need an explanation for this because the official put his hand on Lamont Walker's chest and shoved him out of the way. Official Matt Porter, part of the crew with Roderick Dixon and Keith Kimball. Maybe I didn't see what I thought I did. And maybe he was separating from another player. You see Lamont Walker down at the bottom of your screen. They're playing good defense, and he reaches in, and it's the good call. There was a foul, but then watch what happens after the foul. You see Lamont Walker trailing the ref in the right. He went up. Oh, he touched the ref. He sure did. Yeah, he touched the ref. Hey, and let me tell you something, he's lucky he's not ejected because that's a no-brainer. You touch an official and you're out. And so Mike Davis is going to say, I understand, I got it, everything's good. Having said that, if I'm an official, I don't shove a kid back. I, I was going to say, that's where I was going to go next. I don't shove a kid back. So that's Sport with Light. Technical foul. Yeah, that's on Lamont Walker. Again, it was for touching the official. And I, I'm just going to say one more time that I'm going to drop it. Lamont Walker was wrong. You cannot go out and touch an official, and he should be ejected, and he's not. So he's fortunate from that. Having said that, boy, I tell you what, you're, uh, you're an official and you're keeping control of the game. You cannot put your hands on a player. And it almost looked retaliatory, right? I mean, it almost looked like it, he was shoving, saying, get out of my face. It did. And you make me want to look at it one more time, Reed. I understand why you have, have said your piece about it. I watch it again on the right side. Look, he's trailing the official. He puts his hand out on him, and he touches it. I, I don't know. I don't know, partner. Now the free throws make it 31-23. So a little bit of drama here. Now Texas Southern picked up a couple of technical fouls, and there's a pass that's behind the cutting Lamont Walker. Texas Southern picked up two late technicals last night, and Mike Davis was asked about that in the press conference after the game. And Mike's response was, you must not watch us play. That's kind of par for the course for us. So the technical on Lamont Walker and a little bit of a pushback from official Matt Porter. So we continue to play with five and a half minutes to go first half. Fighting Banyard. And it's tied up position will give it to Texas Southern. What about Arkansas Pine Bluff? I mean, they're not playing particularly well. I'm not sure that Texas Southern can play much better than they've played here. And George Ivory's team 
and you look up at the clock and they're only down by eight. You talk about taking a punch. Is the zone playing any better right now? There's a long three from Bruce that's missed. And maybe I just answered my own question. They just shot a really long three. Robertson has it blocked from behind by Trayvon Reed. Harper and and one. Well, Trayvon Reed did a nice job blocking the first one, and then he just stopped playing. And Mike Davis wants him to block the shot. I looking to complete a three-point play. Does so and makes us a five-point game with five minutes that's to go. Amazing. I, I'm telling you, that's amazing because the way TSU started this game, I thought they were going to go in the locker room up by 20. The SWAC championship from Houston. The winner gets the automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. In the corner, three on the way and knocked down by Lamont Walker. Now a timeout. They're gonna, are they calling a double foul? Well, we just saw that last yeah. time around. I, I didn't see the follow through. I thought he was just trying to get untangled, but after the play, he clearly follows through and throws that elbow. And so that's gonna be a flagrant one on Dante Clark. So you can see the left of your screen and well, he couldn't see it from that angle. Man, what a change in the momentum of this game, right? I mean, God, it was all TSU, and then suddenly weird stuff starts happening, and you look up, and Arkansas Pine Bluff taking advantage of these opportunities. Let's see how Mike Davis's team responds. Uh, again, I, I, I mentioned last night's game because Texas Southern in the semifinal game against Prairie View a and picked up a couple of technical fouls late in the game, and Mike Davis was asked about it in the post-game press conference, and he said, hey, that... It's kind of normal for us, but you do have to have a line in the sand here, Reed. It's early in this game still with a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Cooler heads have to prevail. Well, and a fine line between playing really, really hard, being aggressive, and you still have to be smart and not make plays that hurt your team. And it's a four-point game, and if you're Arkansas Pine Bluff, you got to feel pretty good about things right no now. Doubt. They've adjusted their zone. Look at the man right there, McKnight, in the middle. They've taken away that high post pass, and uh, TSU has not responded well. So a nice adjustment by George Ivory. Bruce has been playing with two fouls, a good chunk of this half, and his pass trying to get it down low to Reed is picked off. McKnight. Gets in the lane, moved around Randall. I thought he was going to shoot it, but it's kicked back out to Tolliver. Now McKnight again. Pull up jumper. Tried to kiss it high off the glass. Bruce. Randall foul by Banyard. But count it. The big man finishing there. Yeah, Trayvon Reed. Every time down the court, they wanted to get the ball to the high post. They did. Arkansas Pine Bluff makes an adjustment. They take that pass away, and TSU has struggled. Trayvon Reed misses the free throw, so stays a six-point lead for Texas Southern. Oh, and Tolliver had his man. Hardy who got spun around a little bit, and they can't connect on the pass. Should have been an easy two. zone is more like a 1-2-2 in two, two the off guy. They're really communicating at that high post area. Three minutes to go in the half. Shot clock's at five. And the lob to Trayvon Reed from Trey Jefferson. Well, when in doubt, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just throw it up towards the rim. And then Reed reaches around and commits the foul on Harper. Uh, a nice pass by Trey Jefferson. Look, he throws it from his hip and just lobs it up there. And it's not like Trayvon Reed was really open. Uh, I mean, he had a player right there in front of him. And the seven foot, two inch Trayvon Reed. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you, how do you defend that? And Trayvon Harper actually did defend it pretty well, but it's just a perfect pass. Yeah, perfect pass. And it's one of those things that if the big fella gets both feet in the lane, you're going to have to put a body on him. And so coaches talk about spacing, not only on the perimeter, but when you have a high flyer or a 7-2 kid, then you talk about spacing on the back end, and you talk about air space. And you're going to have to commit a player back there to put a body on him. Air space, huh? Uh, no, I don't know what else space would be yeah, other yeah. than air. But <laughs> <laughs> Let's say back line up high spacing. I just want to make sure I got the vernacular correct, man. When I'm <laughs> trying to repeat what you said and act smart. See, uh, uh, a partner looking out for my back would just let that go and not try to distinguish air space from non air space. <laughs> Still a six-point game. You got Arkansas Pine Bluff just hanging around. Harper. Tolliver fires a pass to Hardy, and then the turnaround by Harper. Trayvon Harper has been really good, and he is not intimidated in the slightest by the seven-foot-two and Trayvon Reed. Texas Southern's lead down to four. And Bruce changes that with another three. That is his third three of the day. I think that is fourth, four of six. Harper is able to back down and in nice position to lay it in. Uh, Harper now with 13 points, leading score for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Clear in space, Jefferson fouled. Shooting three there. Trey Jefferson coming into the game, averaging 24 points per game for Mike Davis's TSU Tigers. And his only points so far have come from the free throw line. He got bailed out a little bit. And, you know, that's a foul, and it was going to be a tough contested shot, and Joe Randall Tolliver just lost track of his body. You know, when you contest shots, you contest them with your arms and vertically, and then you start trying to get your body over there to contest, and. Uh, then you run the risk of the unpardonable sin fouling a jump shooter when he had a tough shot already. You don't want to invade the cylinder, I guess is the terminology these days. Yeah. The shooter, the offensive player has an imaginary cylinder. The officials have done a really good job with that this year, I think. You know, the games I've watched, and we've always talked a lot about the offensive player's cylinder, but they've done a good job with the defensive player has a cylinder as well, and that's a new point of emphasis this season that I think has been very much a success. Well, they said that's two free throw, or the second one coming here of the three. For a moment, there seemed to be some confusion, but he was shooting a three-point shot. Jefferson converts them, and he stays perfect from the line. Eight-point lead with a minute to go in the half. Deflected by Reed and right into the arms of Walker. Bruce, tough shot from the left elbow. Reed, offensive rebound. Jefferson. Good defense. Bruce on the drive, fouled by Harper. Well, coming up, 8.30 Eastern over on ESPN. We'll take you to Barclays Center in Brooklyn for the New York Life ACC Championship game. North Carolina taking on Virginia, the sixth seed against the one. You can always catch this on the ESPN app as well. Texas Southern as a team was seven of eight from the line prior to that miss. 
Mike Davis talking to a 7-2 guy and talking to his 5-7 guard. Well, Texas Southern has buttoned it up to a nine-point lead now. So George Ivory, the Arkansas Pine Arena is absolutely beautiful. And two years ago, this building was a dump. I mean, it was dark and dingy and musty and smelled bad. And I'm telling you, this is a beautiful basketball arena. As a native Houstonian, it makes me proud, and HISD should likewise be proud of this facility. Down to four on the shot clock, game clock at eight. Loose ball going out of bounds and off a Texas Southern, or uh, yeah, off a Texas Southern player, but just two on the shot clock and six and a half seconds left in the half. Really aggressive 2-3 zone by TSU. Now they go to a man. Shot up in time, hit the rim. Final seconds winding down and he's not gonna get the shot off. And that's the end of the first half. A Texas action between Derek Bruce and his head coach Mike Davis. And Mike Davis jumped up and he said, Coach, I got it, I got it. Trust me and well, that trust was well deserved. Now starting the second half. Back on Martavius McKnight is Derek Bruce, and he did a good job on him in the first half. And nine points for McKnight in the first half. He did have four rebounds in his 17 minutes. Harper scores. Well, we didn't really see McKnight's kind of take over as he does so many games. Yeah, the person taking over right now is Trayvon Harper. Yeah, for Arkansas, Pine Bluff had 15 points in the first half, and right out of the locker room, they go right back to him. Harper is 7 of 13 from the field. The rest of his teammates are 6 of 17. And he, he's just so confident that he catches that ball. He doesn't dribble it in the post. He turns over his left shoulder or right shoulder and goes right up. And we've hit him, seen him hit jump shots over 7 foot 2 inch Trayvon Reed, over 6 8 Marquis Salmon. And, and right now, the story for Arkansas Pine Bluff has been Trayvon Harper. Who will graduate in May. He's the only Arkansas Pine Bluff player to start every game this season. Well, he was good last night. Uh, against oh, Southern, he had 23, 23 points. Yeah, in, in 25 minutes. Really impressed with his motor. Man, he just keeps going and keeps going until he finishes possessions on both ends of the floor. One of two for Dante Clark. Knight looking. Harper going to face up on Salmon. Robertson, one dribble, goes up off the glass and puts it in. But again, the offense running through Harper. TSU going over and double teaming him when he gets the ball. Nice pass fake. And Clark got it down low, laying by Salmon, and he's fouled. But it all began with that, as you mentioned, that shot fake looking left. Beautiful pass fake by Dante Clark. He catches the ball from a pass from the right, looks left, and he sells it not only with the ball, but his eyes. Watch his eyes. He catches it, and then watch the defense. The defense just shifts. Look at boom, and boy, McKnight has no idea where the ball is, and a very nice job of using his eyes. Lead stays at eight. Just over a minute deep into the second half. Long three, Jackson long with it. And after that quick shot, a rebound for Trayvon Reed. Jefferson, five points in the first half. They all came from the free throw line. He had four rebounds, five assists. Jefferson. That's a guy 5'7". Yeah, I, he is fearless when he goes in there. And, you know, we're talking about that he didn't make a jump shot in the first half, but he played very much within himself. He did not force any shots, only had three field goal attempts in the first half. It's for a guy who's averaging team-high 24 points per game. Ooh, that's a trap. Steen tipped around and batted in, not sure which Lion got a hand on that. Steen dri took yeah. two dribbles to the right, came to a jump, sh jump stop, and shuffled both feet.
Bruce. Catch and shoot Jefferson. That pass to him was a little bit yeah, low. Yeah, really low. Caught it down there below his kneecaps. Harper, turn around, short. Jefferson with that high bounce pass to Bruce. Clark. Really good box out that time by Trayvon Harper. From the free throw line, up and in for Christian Robertson. Robertson kind of an energy guy for George Ivory. And every time you look, Arkansas Pine Bluff, yeah. down eight, down six, down eight, down six. They're kind of trading hoops here. Remember, they played two times this season prior to this afternoon. And Arkansas Pine Bluff won both of those games by a combined three points. Got away with the walk and the laying down low. Well, it's almost identical to the travel that Steen got away with on the other end. So now uh, coaches, you're even. And McKnight had it knocked away by Reed and Reed just let go of it. Jefferson ran into it, feeds Clark. Reed comes down and gets fouled, but still hits the bucket. They're a really good catch by... 10-point game with 15.37 to go. Right now, Mike Davis's team trying to return as the SWAC champion to the NCAA tournament. That's the next ticket to be punched. Trayvon Reed and his teammates have been very efficient in this basketball game. They've got 15 assists on 19 made field goals. They played earlier this year and Texas Southern only had seven assists in the entire game. And 15 is a really big number here with this much time on the clock. Robertson, short pass, Banyard, and one. How about the job that Derek Bruce is doing on Martavius McKnight? And McKnight had nine points in the first half, but what really has not been a factor in this game, look at him to the right of your screen. I mean, he has almost taken him out of the game, and McKnight just standing out on the perimeter watching. I don't know about you, but I thought McKnight's Probably didn't take advantage of Bruce's two fouls Absolutely. in the first half as much as he should have. Yeah, recognize an attack because only once did we see him catch the ball up there about 35 feet, you know, lower his shoulder and get all the way to the rim. Because Bruce defensively seems like he has new life here. He's, he's has more energy defending McKnight a, a little more aggressively. Staying in this 1 2 2 zone. Clark, fade away, short. Trayvon Reed's been really good. He has been active. He's not, a lot of seven-footers just rebound in position, and they don't leave their position to go get the ball. And that time, Trayvon Reed was boxed out and did not stick on the defensive player's back, spun around and got the rebounder, got control of that ball on the other side of the rim. You don't see that a lot with, with footers. Clark lost it. Knight's been stuck on nine points for a while. The conference player of the year. Makes an adjustment there and gets a call. Yeah, really nice step through that time by Martinez Knight. Coming into this game, Arkansas Pine Bluff, the second best defensive team in the SWAC, not only in scoring defense, but field goal percentage, 40%. And right now, Texas Southern up above 60% for the game. 
Dante Clark. Hardy feeds Harper. He's on the move. And a nice little twist at the end to lay it in. A 7-0 run. And now Arkansas Pine Bluff only down four. This is as close as they have been in a while since the early stages. Who's that off of it? Yes, it did touch Sam at last. Yeah, interesting adjustments right now. The zone defense for George Ivory's Golden Lions. They show a 2-3 zone, and then when someone flashes high, they were showing a 1-2-2, now they're showing a 2-3, and when someone flashes high, someone on the back end of that zone is trailing the guy all the way up. So the whole look of the zone changes, but not from the top, from the bottom. Mike Davis's team has not adjusted well to that. McKnight defended by Bruce with the pass for Robertson. And a blocking foul underneath. A nice dive to the basket. Christian Robertson saw McKnight get double teamed. McKnight took a dribble, a relief dribble, dragged the defense, the trap, away from the basket. And instead of staying stationary, Christian Robertson did just what he should have done and dove to the basket. Robertson is 63% foul shooter, knocks down the first. Now McKnight, watch him drag the double team away from the basket, and instead of just staying stationary, you penalize the team, right? You can't let them double team you and then get away with it without punishing them. Good execution. 8-0 run in the last two minutes for Arkansas Pine Bluff. They are only down three. They were down by as many as 13. That's deflected into the backcourt, so Bruce able to go back to retrieve it. The ball just not moving like it was in the first half for TSU. High bluff foul. Wow, that is on Harper. And that is his fourth. Oh my, that, that is a huge factor right now for the Golden Lions. He leads all scores with 19 points. He has six rebounds and just picked up his fourth foul with 13, uh, well, 12 40 to go. So he's going to come out. Yeah, that's key. Yeah, that is key. That's going to be tough for George Ivory because you're sitting down and you're sitting there looking up at the clock and probably have assistants in your ear going, okay, now, George. Now, George, George, it's been a, it, now's enough time. Get him back in, George. <laughs> it's going to be tough. We'll watch how long he sits. He sits down in the first seat. He's not planning on staying out for very long. All right, back to a five-point lead for Texas Southern. With Harper on the bench, McKnight needs to come alive scoring. Banyard missed. Hardy, back to Banyard. Deflected out of bounds by Texas Southern and Bruce. McKnight. Hardy passed up the three. Back to McKnight. He shoots the three. Reed deflected it, and it went right to Tolliver, and it's kept by the Lions. The pass down low. It looked like it was tied up for just a moment, but then Banyard able to go up with it and gets fouled. Now Reed's going up and rebounding with one hand instead of going up with two hands and controlling the ball. And 11.55 to go here at Del Mar Stadium in Houston, Texas. Swag championship. Satellite needed. It is a five-point game under 12 minutes to play in the 2018 Swag Championship of Del Mar Fieldhouse, Houston, Texas, along with Reed Geddes, I'm Mark Ely. The winner of this game gets the SWAC automatic berth into the NCAA tournament. Arkansas Pine Bluff trying to get there for the first time since 2010. Texas Southern win last year, and they've gone three in the last four years. 
They're looking for their eighth overall trip to the NCAA tournament. You know, the story right now in this basketball game, Trayvon Harper over there on the bench for Arkansas Pine Bluff with four fouls. And Martavius McKnight has got to come alive and provide some offense until George Ivory can get Harper back in this game. Texas Southern without a field goal in the last almost four minutes. Jefferson somehow threw it right to Bruce. Under 10 on the shot clock. Clark's pass picked off and an offensive foul. Taking the charge was Kamari Hardy. Well, Dante Clark a little bit out of control. Two different possessions that time. And boy, he jumped up and threw a pass floating through the lane. And you know, George Ivory's team's going to rotate over and take a charge on that. Ray Jefferson was holding his right hand like he hit it. Well, Arkansas Pine Bluff within two. The closest they've been since two to nothing early in this game. And the lob to Trayvon Reed is how they answer to end the drought. A much better job that time when Trey Jefferson penetrated when he threw the pass he jumped off one foot but he went straight up and came straight down. Well McKnight up to 13 points but he has been relatively quiet. George Ivory really animated on the sidelines thought there was a foul on that. Clark fouled out for Texas Southern with 14 points. Ninth time he's fouled out of a game this year, most on the team. And a right corner three is swished by Robert Lewis. And just his 12th three-point field goal made of the season for Robert Lewis. McKnight. And here is Lewis. That was a wild, out-of-control shot by Martavius McKnight. We are midway through the second half. Loose ball. High bluff foul. All right, so if you're George Ivory, and, and a lot of times you'd keep somebody on the bench and then put them back in and keep playing at nine minutes, if this gets to be a seven or nine point game, if you're George Ivory, you may start thinking about offensive defensive substitutions. Every time you get an opportunity on the offensive end to get Trayvon Harper back in, you're gonna be tempted to do that as long as you can get him back out or tell him, hey kid, don't foul. Well, now that lead back up to seven. McKnight back out now into the corner. That's Jefferson. Um, what a ah. great play. I'm telling you, Trey Jefferson, oh, he's getting into it with a fan. Hey, someone needs to pull him away and get out of that. But Trey Jefferson was completely out of your picture. And then look at him dive inside and get a deflection. That was tremendous hustle. Night to pull up with four on the shot clock. Nine minutes to go in Houston in the SWAG championship game. This gets to nine. I'm putting Harper back in. Now Walker foul on that particular play, and that's going to be team foul number seven. So one and one upcoming here for Lamont Walker, a 63% foul shooter. How much longer do you leave him on the bench? Well, I just, the question. I, I, again, it gets up, it's seven now, it get, makes these, I, yeah, there you go, that's what I do too. But you still can take him back out, right? If you get a dead ball on the defensive end, when you're about to start a defensive possession, go ahead and get him back out and don't risk it. 
But this was your opportunity, as you alluded to. You can get him in on the offensive side right here. Harper's been great. 19 points, leads all scores. He's been efficient. He's played hard. He's got six rebounds. He's been the best player for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Two free throws for Lamont Walker. Lead back up. Nine point edge for Texas Southern. Eight to shoot. Harper doubled. McKnight, four to shoot. Baseline jumper. Crashing in Banyard. Taking on the baseline. Jefferson, long outlet pass. Bruce. Oh, he thought about yes, it. Yes, he did. <laughs> he thought about it. Probably a good decision. Eight minutes to go. Too strong. Deflected. Flipped by Harper. McKnight. Driving the little floater just won't fall. You know, TSU has not been deliberate for much of this game, and so the concern is here: don't stop. You know, keep dancing with who brought you. Don't don't get so caught up that you have late shot clock situations on every possession. Cameron Posey reaching in, the freshman, but a timeout called first. By Trey on ABC. Now the winner of this game becomes the 16th team to punch their ticket for the NCAA tournament with two on the shot clock. That ball didn't hit the rim, and a shot clock violation even after the rebound by Trayvon Reed. So that takes us to another timeout. We step aside again with 7.06 to play. For the People premieres Tuesday, 10 9 Central on ABC. Let me tell you about this SWAG championship game. You got Texas Southern shooting nearly 60% from the field today, 44% for Pine Bluff. Texas Southern hit eight threes, Pine Bluff three. They're only down, well, still nine. Jefferson loses it. A little sloppy, McKnight back into the front court. Posey, a freshman, shooting a three. I guess my point being, it could be a lot worse. He shot that, and I'm not sure he really shot it like he thought it was going in. You know, Trey Jefferson's been quiet scoring, just nine points, has done a very good job running his basketball team, has six assists to just one turnover. TSU shot 15 three-point field goal attempts in the first half. They have, that's just their fourth one in the second half. The shot clock was winding down again, and then Banyard is fouled. After that long rebound. I, I don't like TSU running the clock all the way down. They were so good moving that ball, being crisp, making the zone shift side to side, and now they're trying to go with late clock possessions, and uh, it's not working for Mike Davis right now. He might be tempted to say, hey, let's just play. Let's just keep playing the way we have the whole game. Now the freshman Posey got the ball up the floor, fouled as Harper. He's been on the floor with his four fouls for about the last, uh, what, uh, almost three minutes or so? A nice adjustment by George Ivory. When he first checked back into the game, he kept catching the ball, and he was about 25 feet from the basket. Last two possessions, they put him down there on the left block and slammed it into him. And that's 20 now for Harper. Stays perfect from the line, five of five today. All right, back to a seven-point game. They've been kind of hanging in this gray area for a while. Of in the game, but not all the way back in within a possession or two. So Pine Bluff really extended this zone defense. Jefferson off balance. 
tipped in, in by Lamont Walker. Oh, a beautiful tip in by Lamont Walker. Back to a nine point game. Lamont Walker's going to need to play defense. I mean, you see Trey Jefferson and staying in the middle of the lane, being there for a quick double team from Harper. Little short with that shot from Harper, and then he just fouled Trayvon Reed and fouled out. Not a smart foul there. I mean, why? He has been great. He's been virtually unstoppable, has been the best offensive player, and then almost a frustration foul. And I think that's what George Ivory is saying to him. Trayvon Reed had the ball in his hands. And that's a play you may take a risk on if you've got two fouls or three, but uh, that was... It's a tough one to swallow if you're a Golden Lion fan. Harper fouls out at the 5.07 mark. Right now a game high 21 points with seven rebounds. The front end is hit by Trayvon Reed after what was team foul number eight against the Lions. Disappointed Harper there. It had a great game. Boy, he was really good. He played hard, uh, played with emotion. He was tough, and you know, he really carried the team. And now it's time for Ortavius McKnight or somebody else to step up. Double-digit lead now. It's up to 11 for Texas Southern. How good has Derek Bruce been guarding McKnight? McKnight just hadn't had any looks at the basket. Well, had a mediocre good look there, which was quickly erased by the seven-footer Trayvon Reed. He thought he had a good look when he <laughs> let go of it. Yeah. <laughs> Steen got that over the arms in the reach of Reed for the bucket. Once again, Texas Southern eating clock, and I think you feel like it's kind of stagnated their offense. Lewis. Well, if you can hit the three, yeah, that that's changes right. everything. That's right. That, that is a perfect possession. If you can get the shot clock down to 10, get a dribble penetration and a wide open shot you knock down, I could not ask for a better possession for TSU. They've expanded the edge to a dozen. Posey, his three's off the left side. Steen, partially blocked by Reed. Bruce. Foul underneath on Texas Southern, and we come to a timeout. But Texas Southern trying to make it four out of the last five years in the NCAA tournament. They're up 12 with 3.40 to go in Houston. Bad thing. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Eight for 15 from the line this year. Well, there you go. Step up and knock it down. It's assistant coach's job, so every assistant coach has got a certain thing that they are tracking and, and responsible for and late game situations. There will be an assistant over there that knows everybody's free throw percentage and ought to be able to almost quote it to the coach when he needs it. Hardy fouls the stop of the 337 left. Every time it looked like Arkansas Pine Bluff was going to make this a one possession game and really feel like they were in this thing. Mike Davis's team hit a shot, made yep. a defensive stand, always did something to maintain a little bit of separation, just enough. And now they've opened it up to double digits again. Yeah, it, was, it was a seven to nine point game, almost the entire game, got it to four, bounced back to seven. And then in the second half, got it within two. George Ivory's team came back and well, then they move it back out to seven. And here we are with 11 point lead. And, Really tough to press a team that has Trey Jefferson on it because he's just difficult to deny the ball. And then once he gets it, he's just so quick and so low to the ground. Ignite. 
really hasn't been his best shooting day. Maybe the best look he's had this game. They are not going to get out of that zone. Ooh. And he traveled on the spin. Well, George Ivory said he'd be playing zone all day and he in went the half court, there. and he was not exaggerating. So if you're TSU right now, you got to spread the floor, but the guys on the back line, you can't just stand there and stare at him. Mark, Mike Davis will have one of those guys flash up to the middle of the court to relieve the pressure when those guards get double teamed. High Bluff needs a basket. Good defense. Banyard along two. Robertson able to save it and calls a timeout. He was wasn't technically falling out of bounds. His momentum was going that way. Remember they changed that yeah. rule a few years ago. If you break the plane, you can't leave the ground and call a timeout in the air. But his toe, you know, I hate to belabor it, but Trayvon Harper fouls out of this game, and there's almost nowhere to go offensively for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Texas Southern trying to avenge a couple of close losses to Pine Bluff in the regular season. One by two points, the other by one. They do get a bucket to make it a 10-point game. Man, he just knives his way through. Well, he, he was triple teamed. They got the ball inbounds to him, and he was triple teamed. And he's so quick, he jabbed and then took a step back, and they threw it over the top. But look at all the white shirts trying to keep the ball out of Trey Jefferson's hands. I mean, it's just so stinking fast. Look, he catches it, zip. Man, he's by you. And then again, you're not going to poke the ball loose because he's got that thing about 18 <laughs> inches off the floor. Really solid game. You know, Mark, I'm, I'm so impressed with Trey Jefferson because you come into this game, it's as high visibility as you could possibly have uh, for Texas Southern. He averages 24 points per game. I'm not sure he's taken a bad shot that wasn't forced by the shot clock the entire game. He has been content to let this game come to him. And he's been perfect at the free throw line. Night. That's going to be a one and one coming after the 18 foul against the Tigers. That is the last thing you want to do if you're TSU. You do not want to foul and give Arkansas Pine Bluff a chance to get some points without the clock running. Mike Davis jumped up and he ran down there and he put both hands straight up in the air, saying, "No, no, no, no! Don't, don't reach at this point." In and out, he misses the front end. Jefferson. That was Hardy who fouled him. Ryan Carey checked into the game for TSU, has not played the entire game, only averages three points per game, a 64% free throw shooter, and he had the ball. And he may be a great free throw shooter. 64% may not be indicative of his free throw ability, but some guy that's been on the bench that long, that's who I would put at the line, not Trey Jefferson. Gary played a dozen minutes last night against Prairie View A&M when Jefferson did get into a bit of some foul issues. In fact, Jefferson fouled out of the game late. It's just been a consistent yeah, yes. at the line. Yeah, sure has. 11 of 11. Under two minutes to go in a 14-point game. Looking like Texas Southern is going to go to the NCAA tournament for back-to-back -to -back times. And four out of the last five years with a win here. Robertson. This is Sprinkle, Jabrun Sprinkle. Loose ball picked up by Trayvon Reed.
Dangerous pass coming this way. You all right, partner? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. That's deflected off McKnight's hand. They go for the lob. And Trayvon Reed, what may be the exclamation point. Well, Texas Southern made the tournament last year. And who'd they get? They got North Carolina, who went on to win the national title. So I'll go back to you. You could argue that <laughs> could have been the second best team. Uh, if I play for TSU, yeah. I say we were the second best team in the country. <laughs> That's a great game. Uh, this was a very well played game. And how about Arkansas Pine Bluff? Starting the season, they were picked eighth. And they have overachieved the entire season. And now kudos to George Ivory and these Golden Lions. They had a great season. And uh, Texas Southern going back to the NCAA tournament. Texas Southern is going to be their eighth tournament trip in school history. We got the Mac Tourney Championship, Toledo and Buffalo coming up from Cleveland with Clay Matvick and Rob Kennedy. It's Texas Southern's gonna win the SWAC Championship here in Houston. Well, he, he finally lost one in mop-up time. I think he'll be able to sleep tonight. Yeah. I don't think he's gonna have any problems in film session tomorrow. <laughs> around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Bruce, not a big fan of that. No. Well, Mike Davis can smile because his team's headed back to the NCAA tournament. 84-67, Texas Southern over Arkansas.